Welcome back to Good Morning Sri Lanka. We are still uh, talking about gender-based violence, uh, commemorating uh, the 16 days uh, of campaign. Uh, and uh, right now, we were actually talking about how uh, Sri Lankan culture um, um, gives a little bit of uh, cover-up <laughs> to domestic violence and uh, how we should actually uh, uh, come out and give it out in the laws. Um, so, yeah, like um, Shuruni was saying, um, anything else that you would like to add up into that? Uh, well, only that, I mean, as Shuruni was saying about the Domestic Violence Act, I think that was a huge leap forward yes. for us, also culturally, socially, legally. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but uh, what's also important about it is that it doesn't criminalize the behavior as such. What yeah. it does is give an opportunity to the woman, the spouse, who's quite often reluctant to actually take her husband to court for a number of reasons. She may be economically dependent, she may be worried about the kids. So that's really a way for her to get immediate protection from an immediate danger that she's facing. Yeah. And and that is also cultural based, I think. Well, I, <laughs> I think, see, I, I don't think we should bring the cultural argument. This, okay. is, this is often uh, trotted out uh, because there's an assumption that women must suffer the violence, exactly. must suffer the violence in silence. But we don't think the same, say, for instance, about men. It, we, we accept the right of men to be free from violence. We don't say, oh, it's, it's a cultural norm, you have to be silent. Mm -hmm. If a man gets beaten on the street, yes, if he yes. gets tortured in a police station, everybody picks it up. But when the violence occurs in the private sphere, there's an assumption that women must keep quiet. And women themselves sometimes internalize this. But why are we then not talking about the man and the man's responsibility True. not to be violent. That True. needs to be part of our culture. And that's attitudinal. And I think like it is. Saying, yeah. It is attitudinal. But in Sri Lanka, particularly with the majority Buddhist culture in this country, yes. we, we need to talk about the, the, the question of violence. No? So we, I think another thing we've done is internalize violence in that there is such a, a, a strong sense of impunity, whether mm -hmm. it was the war, whether it is societal violence, there is no real punishment for violence and mm. therefore perpetrators think they can get away with anything. Mm. The attitude of politicians towards violence. I know, the, you well, know that's quite shocking So all actually. of that and mm. so I think that's the culture we need to break. That's the new culture to be free from violence is a culture we need to build. Yes. And, and also just to add to that, you know, in the same way that there's this veil of secrecy around violence within the home, there's also a certain sort of level of covering up, like to use the term that you mentioned earlier, with regard to this kind of behavior within the workplace, workplace. I think. Yeah. So, for instance, you know, uh, preventing sexual harassment in the workplace is something that, for instance, 60 Days Activism Campaign through the Forum for GBV has picked up as one of the key issues, which is looking at uh, having sexual harassment policies or anti-sexual harassment policies within work places uh, and you know for instance India is way ahead of Sri Lanka in that you know okay. the Supreme Court judgment which said that all institutions need to have right. policies and prevent sexual harassment so you know this is also a, a very different sort of uh, legal culture where you take up these issues to your highest court and you actually get redress mm. with regard to gender and, and other rights violations um, so I think that uh, that's another area where the courts and others can play a big role as well as institutions so we know that some institutions private and government do have p policies on sexual harassment and we think that's a value in just even having that policy yeah, true. because then you tell the employees I mean even for your institution whether it's a television or media and company or whatever mm -hmm. you know just to say we have this policy you socialize it within your institution because you're making the point that this is wrong yes and that itself is is of value yeah okay and um, do, now when it comes to attitudes even in workplaces, uh, do you think personally, according to the feedback that you've been getting, according to the work that you've been doing, do you think there is a gender um, discrimination when it comes to workplaces? Is there a discrimination between um, working women and working men? And do working women get treated a little less better than uh, working men? Does that kind of thing happen? Because I've, according to what I've heard, and red. I think there's that sort of thing happening even in metropolitan areas. So, uh, what what is your opinion on that? I mean, uh, well, on the uh, on the question of say, violence, particularly sexual harassment yes. in the workplace, certainly there there is an issue of power imbalance. Okay. You know, and uh, you will always find that it is maybe a superior who uses his position of privilege and power uh, to intimidate or harass 
particularly sexually harassed uh, female employees maybe um, to ask for favors to expect of course, favors yeah, yeah. you know that's very common so that certainly in the in the workplace we see that we see that in uh, very prestigious institutions uh, whether it's in ed the educational sector the medical sector the legal sector um, and like Sarini said we have the law we need to bring in policy to make sure uh, that the law is properly implemented yes. so the question of a power imbalance the question of discrimination historic discrimination against women uh, the fact that we see women as citizens of second class of a second class nature yeah, yeah, yeah. that we look at women's citizenship from the lens of vulnerability for instance so when we try to find remedies we f we, we look at how how to protect a woman but that is really not what we are saying. So uh, maybe Shulnia and Sani will add to this. I mean, you know, when we talk of, say, say harassment in the public sphere even, mm -hmm. or in the workplace, uh, the response is, oh, she was wearing a short skirt. Uh, <laughs> uh, she, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that happens a lot. Slit, yeah. uh, she provoked. So you're looking at it always from that point true, of view. True, true, true. Um, that even happens in public transport. The whole certainly. She was dressed in this way, so I was provoked. The issue, the issue is I mean, that no, men do have us yeah, exactly. or violate. And what yeah. are we doing about that? I think just also to pick up on the whole discrimination angle, you know, the Constitution does prohibit discrimination oh. on the basis of gender along with lots of other grounds okay. on which you cannot discriminate against women. So I think we need to remember that there's a constitutional guarantee on non-discrimination. There's a constitutional guarantee of equality for men and women. All right. Uh, even in uh, professional... Uh, yeah, places, the yeah. thing is that you usually use a fundamental rights jurisdiction mainly against state institutions. Right. So there is this lacuna, this gap with regard to how you hold the private sector accountable. Yeah. Uh, again, in this country, we don't have a national commission on women. Uh, so there are the countries that do, for instance, India. I mean, yeah. recently uh, they are investigating some very serious um, allegation with regard to, to you, know, vi you know, violations of women's rights. Whereas we don't really have that high-level sort of institution that can look into violations. But if there were such a body, what many of us have been very strongly advocating for is to include the private sector there, because as you said, many of these discriminatory practices do happen within private sector organizations. Yeah, it's quite common. Uh, it's it's basically work home and transport so basically there's no peace it's everywhere it's everywhere there's no peace when it comes to uh, violence against women because it's everywhere um, uh, another very special uh, I, I'm just curious to ask you because now we were talking about gender-based violence um, and violence against women so obviously it's not just about violence against women we have to be um, sort of women even women have to be a little educated about um, how violence against men should be considered as well uh, like um, you said before that if uh, a wife beats up the husband he has the same right as the wife who has been beaten up the, by the husband to uh, go to the courts um, do you see any uh, any that sort of issue when it comes to um, violence against men in Sri Lanka does that really is it common because I know that in uh, other countries, in the Western countries, especially when it comes to um, homosexual uh, relationships, people are pretty um, uh, educated and uh, acknowledged about it. But when it come, uh, in Sri Lanka, is, is it quite common to be um, abused and um, your rights getting valid if you are a man? I think the reason, maybe Sirene, this will jog your memory, I think there is a recent study done by Care International okay. which says that actually there is a lot of uh, sexual abuse of boys in Sri Lanka which and then those boys when they grow up uh, are much more uh, prone to, prone to violence against yes, wives violence against women. Yeah. I don't know the prevalence of say violence against men because that's not something that we of course, uh, yeah, yeah, are true. studying. But I think when we are talking about gender based violence and violence against women, we are saying that women uh, are vulnerable to violence because of being a woman whether in the private sphere of the home or in the public sphere. Simply because you're a woman. Simply because you're a woman. <laughs> okay. And there, there is an issue of power and control. And in patriarchal societies, mm. violence is used by men to control and intimidate women. Yeah. So it is not just generalized violence we are talking mm. about. Yeah. This is violence which is particularly directed 
at women because they are women and because it is used uh, in a context of power and control. Okay. And if you look at the statistics, actually, there is a much higher incidence of violence against women. Of course, yeah, definitely. Uh, and that, that is the question we want to address. Yeah. Certainly, uh, marginalized groups uh, are prone to violence. So, like you said, uh, same-sex uh, men, men in homosexual relationships or uh, particularly transgender uh, people yes, yes. Uh, are the people who get uh, Indeed, yeah. penalized, mm. uh, are, are the people who, who are prone to more violence. Um, and so that's, that's an issue. Certainly there are groups working uh, with those uh, segments of society uh, and in those instances certainly men are violated. Yeah. But the vast majority of cases we hear of, we know of. No, I hear you, I hear uh, you. Completely and actually, is, is um, against women. even in terms of sexual abuse, I think there are some recent reports, say, by Human Rights Watch okay. about uh, torture in detention. Hmm. All right. Yeah, yeah, both men and women yeah, uh, I've heard that too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, have been yeah. sexually tortured, yeah, yeah. for instance. My so friends. I think, and like boys. Kumi is saying, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, so in different contexts, but when we are talking about violence against women, we are talking about violence uh, in a particular sense. Clearly because they are women. I think that's a very good yeah. focus. Okay, unfortunately yeah. we've run out of time. <laughs> so uh, we have to say goodbye for today. But if you need any um, information uh, on our show, and if you have missed any segment, please go on www.facebook.com and uh, slash Good Morning Sri Lanka. Don't forget that part. And uh, go into our YouTube segment as well, which you can search by just typing GMSL. And yeah, if you have any feedback, suggestions on anything about our show, and if you have any guest suggestions as well, please mail us in at uh, mtvsports at maharaja.lk. Thank you so much, ladies, for being here. I've learned a lot. And I've been very inspired. I hope that you keep doing what you're doing and inspire society out there and make Sri Lanka a better place. Thank you so much for being here. So, okay, thank so thank time you. for us to say goodbye. Um, we will see you tomorrow, same time, same channel. So until then, have a lovely day. Don't take this day for granted. Live every moment to the last. Bye-bye.